Hello everyone! Some of you watching this might think level designers are programming the entire day, spend a lot of time drawing, or you might even have seen some quote-unquote speed level design videos, which in reality have very little to do with actual level design. For this video, I decided to try something slightly different from my usual format. I've asked three level designers to answer some questions and share their insights on a contentious topic. How technical does a level designer really need to be? We'll try to keep it short and to the point while going into what being technical really means, how important these kinds of skills are, how they manifest in a day-to-day -day job, and how you should be preparing yourself for a job as a level designer. Now let's get to the interview. Today we have with us Steve Lee from Steve Lee Level Design, Max Pierce from Level Design Lobby, and William Josephy, my current lead level designer at Ubisoft. When I asked the question, how technical should a level designer be, what does being technical mean to you? What sort of skills or associations does the word technical bring to mind? Um, I would say the first main thing would be level scripting and gameplay scripting. Coming from a background on games like, well, as a modder, like Half-Life 2, where level design is, you know, it's a very scripted, mostly linear game. And so a lot of the technical side of things is scripting and kind of scripting NPCs and combat set pieces and this kind of thing. Optimizing Geo. In the case of Half-Life 2, back in those days, you had to tell Source what to call and what not to call and lots of Geo optimization stuff to make it run well. In any level designer, I would expect the ability to use visual scripting or, or regular world scripting. I would expect you, through those tools, to have an understanding of how logic systems work and kind of general programming principles because they apply the same to scripting as they do to programming. Also, I would expect any level designer to obviously understand the technical limitations of the engine and the system that they're using. What are the view distances you have to think about to make sure you don't make spaces that are too long? Things like streaming and like, okay, I need to transition between two separate areas and I need to have time to stream stuff. Potentially limitations on lighting because lighting can affect gameplay and certainly limitations on the AI side in terms of how many AI you can use, what things are expensive for them. How do I get the most without having to disassemble the whole thing later or put the burden on someone else to fix it later? I think for me, it's two things. One of them is the the depth and understanding of your scripting capabilities for it, whether that be in Blueprint or another visual language for it. It doesn't necessarily mean coding or anything. I think that helps, but I more think of it as a uh, visual scripting side. And then the second element is that of the editor like performance, understanding what comes at a cost when you're adding in, say, these uh, extra set pieces and understanding them and the cost that that comes for not only time and money, but also the performance that you're going to run the risk of and making sure you're keeping tabs or you're tracking that for it. So those are the two big things that come to my mind when we use the word technical. Some of the people watching this might be students about to graduate or in general, getting ready to apply to a video game company as a level designer. What sort of technical knowledge do you not expect from a level designer? I mean, I can kind of program now, but it's never been anything to do with my job as a level designer. There are some exceptions where I've heard that the scripting minded level designers at places like Rockstar and on Call of Duty teams are effectively programming, but generally, I don't think that's an expectation as it's definitely an exception to me rather than the norm. And similarly, like scripting in Blueprint, like gameplay mechanics and stuff, which is very kind of standard these days. Everybody feels like they have to be able to do that because for a level designer to create portfolio work, they often feel like they need mechanics to work with, right? So they end up trying to program their own or implementing somebody else's in Blueprint and stuff. But in reality, a traditional level designer job does not involve designing mechanics and implementing them yourself. Uh, it's very unusual. And I always try to stress that, you know, level design is a creative job and not a technical one. And basically you learn tools on the job in every job you do. Even if you already know Unreal or Unity, the tools you use on that job will be very different to the way the last team you worked with used Unreal or Unity. I expect less for a level designer to understand, for example, some of the limitations the artists have. Like they, they don't really need to understand the texture memory limitations and the animation or rigging. 
it's always good to be able to like create block out meshes and stuff, but you really do not need to know how to texture or optimize an asset, for example. That's just not going to be used in your day to day, at least not in any of the studios I've worked at. A lot of the things I learned to program individually are not useful for the job. Understanding how to build a chain of logic is good, but beyond that, you don't need to know how to program. Some studios might still need you to, but the vast, vast majority don't as a level designer. I think uh, the big thing is, is no one's expecting you to be able to model. This is from my experience. I know in America they do use modeling tools, but if you're probably in Europe, don't worry if you can't model things. Like if you can make it out of primitive shapes and just bashing them together, that's just as good. We're not expecting you to script everything. If you can get the basics of a door opens, teleporting volumes, elements like that, that is strong enough because we know that we can teach you further and we have people to teach you and educate you on how to improve on that as well. And also the final thing is, is like, we're not expecting you to deliver the best level. And we don't mean that in an insulting way. I mean that more in the sense of we don't want that pressure because when you're coming on, like the tends to be that you go junior into level design. Then when you come into an intermediate level, you then pick to specialize in something more technical or traditional LD. And I think for me, it's more, we're here to help you learn and grow. We don't need you to get everything right and to know everything. And it's okay for you to admit that you don't know something. The game development industry has changed a lot over time. And nowadays we're seeing specializations like technical level designer. How do you see the difference between level designer and technical level designer roles? As far as I know that technical level designers usually focus on either the optimization of a level in terms of how it performs but also a different side of it is helping design not the levels really but more designing the way things are implemented by level designers they can often be an interface between programming and level design like they might be the ones spearheading the testing of level design tools and features before they're pushed out to the level designers i'd say it depends on the project some technical level designers I've worked with were essentially doing programming of systems. So they actually had to know how to program and they were building out things like procedural systems and stuff like that for the level designers to use. So essentially building the tooling for the level designers, similar to what tech artists generally do for artists, where they build them tools that they can use in 3ds Max or Maya or, or whatever tool they're using. However, I've also worked where technical level design is much closer to being a level designer, just without the responsibilities of the rest of level design and just purely focusing on building stuff with visual scripting tools or optimizing things that are in the game that the level designers have placed and being there to support the systems and the things the level designers do within their levels to really make them polished and feel amazing. It started off making mobile games, but then I moved over to, to Ubisoft to work on Division. And during that time, I had been asked by our LD lead, because I'd worked on mobile games, which was much more script heavy, if I would be more involved with the technical. And my time was very different because I, I was the technical LD for the world team. So the world LDs would go off and set up all of the uh, events in there, make sure they're planning things with keeping in contact with the narrative team, also the mission LD, so they make sure that there's no uh, missions overlapping, so no enemies ruin the flow and pace of it. While I, on the other hand, was firstly coming up with these rules, right? Like how far could a side mission be from a main mission without that causing performance issues, right? Then I would give off the prefabs to the other teams, but communicating with them, well, what variables do they need to expose in terms of like enemy factions so it could fit in all different districts, then it could be that of uh, how many respawn waves they wanted, etc. So that's the big difference is the team was making more of the creative choices in terms of how to use them, where to place them. I was creating the elements of the best practices for them to use them, but also making their lives much easier because you'll find not everyone on your, your team is as technical as everyone else, which is perfectly fine. They're great at other things. What is the most complicated technical thing you've ever had to do yourself in a level design role? The first thing that springs to mind would be stuff like bug fixing. If you set things up incorrectly, like the streaming volume isn't in the right place or something, 
you can have bugs where if you walk out of the streaming volume, the entire world just disappears <laughs> and, all, and the player and all the NPCs just fall out of the sky. You know? And um, sometimes the, the most weird technical stuff you end up looking into is like when for some reason there's a difference between the way the bug plays out on the PlayStation to the Xbox. And suddenly you're like, how is that even possible? You know, there's a lot of talking with programmers to kind of figure out what could even vary between the two consoles and stuff. But I've never really had to, in terms of making the level itself, that I've been super technical beyond some fairly complicated scripting in terms of taking into account lots of different situations. Like what if the player does this? What if the player goes over there? Not lots of detail-oriented scripting where you care about the timing of things and, you know, making sure dialogue doesn't overlap if the player's sprinting through the level and stuff like this. In my professional job, um, scripting in some of my first projects, because that was before I had access to visual scripting. So it was regular old typing up what you want the game to do using some particular scripting language that the engine used. And then more recently, just building systems so a splash damage contributing towards some reasonably complicated procedural generation systems that we were building in the prototype phase. And then at Arcane, building out what at Ubisoft we call LDIs, so like level design ingredients. In my case, it was this uh, puzzle device um, that you had to input certain codes in. That whole thing is basically built like a blueprint. Um, there's no code in it. It's using all the systems within Void Engine. Doing coding stuff on the mobile games, the editors weren't as powerful as they are today. You had to be more JavaScript or C sharp. Um, I know it's not full grown programming as <laughs> programmers would tell us, but that was probably the most technical making games while scripting in C sharp. And that's like from menu to levels to mechanics. Yeah, that was the most technical I'd say I've gone. Do you have any closing words or advice to the people listening, especially for the aspiring level designers at home? In the context of AAA, where things are specialized enough for technical level design roles to exist, I think it is worth thinking about what it is you're interested in. Level design and technical level design are very different jobs, to the point where traditionally technical level designers aren't designing levels, but they're just working on the technical side of level implementation. And so if you're listening to this, you know, wondering if you have to be both, for example, I would say that generally you really don't and especially not at the start of your career. And so thinking about whether you enjoy the technical side or the kind of gameplay experience design side, having a clear sense of which one of those you're most passionate about is pretty important, I think. For me, it's really important that a level designer has technical experience. Assuming you want to work on games that utilize those skill sets. So if you're going to be building team deathmatch maps for a multiplayer game, sure, you probably don't need any technical knowledge for that. However, if you want to make yourself a very versatile level designer and able to go to different studios and work on lots of varied projects, having technical skills is critical. You don't have to be the master at it, but you need to understand the fundamentals and you need to be able to build stuff for yourself without fully relying on other people. It's been very difficult for a long time where there weren't commercial engines available to build out more technical designs. So you could always build a multiplayer level for Counter-Strike, that's always been the case. But if you wanted to show more single player stuff, it was actually quite difficult. However, now with Unreal 5, there's quite a lot of templates out there that you can bring in to automate the creation of all the gameplay mechanics. There's also things like Unreal for Fortnite that has a built-in editor, but you can also do interesting stuff in like Forge for Halo. It's basically, there's, there's different tools out there and you kind of just need to focus on the right level of detail, which isn't building game mechanics. It's building levels with interesting level mechanics. The thing that I always tell people to do when working on portfolios, and it's be a similar situation with the test is, base it in a pre-existing game universe and try to find stuff out there. Like I've made a Spider-Man level in my spare time as well as a God of War level. I didn't create the Spider-Man template or the God of War template, right? Like I tweaked a few things, but generally these were there built before me. And that's okay. Because when we're building levels, we're not expecting you to make the three C's, which is camera, character, and controls. We're making you just get used to the fact that there are enemies in here, the architecture of the space, 
and that's okay. So make your life easier and get out there, search on Google, you'll see on Unreal Marketplaces as well, or Unity's Marketplace, that there are great templates set up by incredible people for us to use. So enjoy using them. Thank you all very much for taking your time to answer these questions. Now at the end of the video, I'd like to turn the microphone over to you and share with our viewers if there's anything you'd like to promote or put a spotlight on. Yeah, the big one is that I, I've been making YouTube videos. Uh, I've started a level design YouTube channel two or three years ago now. It's kind of a lockdown project. So there's that. I've, I've been making videos for a couple of years. Uh, I try to kind of talk as much as I can about what I think is most important about level design and trying to find the best ways to teach it based on my experience uh, working on like AAA stuff and some indie stuff. And also as part of that, you know, I started a Patreon and we have a Discord community that you can join if you support the Patreon. And we have these level design jams every couple of months where I try to really encourage people to focus on making short playable levels that are kind of portfolio worthy, you know, and can help people get jobs and stuff like that. I don't have a YouTube channel myself. Um, however, I would promote, if you're a level designer, a website called mapcore.org. Most of the communication on it's now moved to Discord, but that is a very good mapping platform for aspiring level designers. I've hired several people from there in the past, and it's just generally a good community for learning level design. If you want to hear more of my sultry tones, then please check out the podcast, uh, Level Design Lobby. We're on everything from YouTube, SoundCloud to Apple and Spotify. And if you're wanting to learn more, I do have books out there for you to check out. Please head over to Google Let's Design Combat or Let's Design Exploration. Great tips for you to have both an ebook and physical copies. Many thanks again to Steve, Will and Max, and thanks to you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more level design content and see you in the next one.